Thank you for taking time out of your day to view my presentation. Over the past 10 weeks, I have been investigating the food environment and dietary behavior of students at the University of Washington, Seattle. This presentation will summarize the goal of the, of the study, key findings, recommendations for housing and food services, and future research. I was motivated to study dietary behaviors on campus due to the personal struggle of finding healthy meals. Upon further research, I discovered that college students are susceptible to poor dietary behavior due to reduced physical activity, high stress, and underconsumption of fruits and vegetables. This is concerning because our dietary behaviors as adults are often developed in early adulthood. Poor dietary behaviors can lead to heart attack, diabetes, stroke, or many other diseases. My overarching goal for the research is to improve the health and well-being of students at the University of Washington. To accomplish this, it was necessary to understand factors that affect student diet and evaluate food services. I created two key questions to help maintain a consistent focus on the core purpose of the study. These questions are, what environmental and behavioral factors affect students' diet? And how can UW Housing and Food Services better meet the dietary needs of students? Although the key questions differed slightly for each methodology, these two questions summarize the purpose of the whole investigation. The complete investigation consisted of three methodologies, field studies, interviews, and a survey. For the field study, I conducted three 30-minute peer observation sessions to observe students' eating behaviors in the Husky Food Den. I identified how mindfully students ate by recording observations on time, posture, spatial awareness, and how frequently students looked at food. In the interview, I hosted three 30-minute sessions with students that live on campus and have a dining account. This population was chosen because their diet is the most impacted by the food environment on campus. The intent was to validate behavioral implications from the field study and gain an understanding of students' views on the food environment. Participants in the survey had the same criteria as the interviews to maintain consistency between the studies. In total, 21 eligible participants were surveyed. The survey helped validate implications from both the field study and interviews. Please take note of the icon for each methodology as they will be used to identify the source of findings in the presentation. The graphic provides a visual representation of the factors that affect students' eating behavior. According to research, the environment and behavior are the two main determinants of an individual's dietary behavior. This is represented by the two boxes, environment and behavior, that converge to become a student's eating behavior. Within each of these determinants, I included four main factors that I presume affect students based on my observations. The environmental factors determine the food on campus and are physical, social, cultural, financial, and political. The behavioral factors represent individual student behaviors, which are habits, self-regulation, coping methods, and lifestyle. After completing the investigation, I found three key findings that were consistent in at least two of the studies and were important to students. The key findings are that UW has poor accessibility to healthy foods, food is expensive, especially fruits and vegetables, and students are not aware of dietary behaviors. In the following section, I will explore each of these findings. Poor accessibility and availability of healthy foods was identified as a problem in the interviews and validated in the survey. Accessibility problems relate to the spatial distribution of food on campus, while availability problems relate to the hours at which healthy foods are available. The, these barriers physically limited students and didn't align with their lifestyle. The survey data revealed that healthy foods are not equally accessible to everyone. The graph demonstrates that on average, students that live in North Campus perceive the availability of healthy foods to be worse than students that live on West Campus. Also, the average rating anywhere on campus is still really low, which shows that students are dissatisfied with the food near them. It is also worth mentioning that all of the interview participants said they frequently ate whatever food was nearby. This supports that ex easy accessibility to healthy food is an environmental factor that limits students' consumption of healthy foods. Data from the surveys showed that 67% of students eat at least sometimes during late night. 
the graph shows that students whom eat at night more frequently are more likely to disagree that healthy foods are available nearby. This is a problem because it limits a student's choice to unhealthy options such as burgers, quesadillas, or pizza which they stay when they stay up late. This was a strong pain point for one of the interview participants who would often leave campus at night just to eat healthier food. The second finding is that food is expensive on campus and that fruits and vegetables are disproportionately higher. This was proven by the frustrations of students that wanted to eat healthier but couldn't afford it. Price was also shown to be the most important factor when selecting a meal. The pricing inequity causes frustrations among students because they can't eat healthy with their budget. Even if students aren't trying to eat better, their price inequity encourages consumption of energy-dense food. In the quote above, the interview participant was comparing the quantity of food that she could get for $5, which is the average amount of money she spends for lunch. Her choices broke down to a healthy snack or a meal high in fat for her lunch. Unfortunately, she frequently had to choose the meal high in fat. When students were asked to rank the priority of four factors, price, taste, quantity, and nutritional value, when selecting food, price was ranked the highest. This implies that price is a constant consideration when students are choosing what to eat. This is unfortunate because it limits students' focus on more important factors such as taste and nutritional value. The last finding is that students are not aware of dietary behaviors. This is supported by the reoccurrence of poor dietary behaviors in all three studies. Mindless eating was common in the field studies. Most students ate by holding their phones with one hand and eating with the other. While eating, students would have bad posture because they were always looking down at their phone and paid little attention to anything around them. Eating in this manner is very harmful to the long-term health of students. In the interviews, I learned that students did not know what dietary behaviors were and did not understand the importance of eating mindfully. Participants frequently ate while using their phone or laptop. One participant even mentioned that he felt awkward if he wasn't entertaining himself with, while eating. The participants also revealed other poor behaviors such as eating when bored, eating quickly, and prioritizing phone use and socializing over eating. In the survey, I validated a few behaviors from interviews. 76% of participants reported eating when bored at least sometimes. The graph demonstrates that people that eat when bored may experience the food on campus to be less affordable. This behavior may cause financial insecurity and lead to increased consumption of cheap energy dense food. This data supports the framework of the problem by acknowledging the combined effect of environmental and behavioral factors on dietary behavior. I propose three design recommendations that will help students consume healthier foods and improve their dietary behaviors. The design recommendations are to make healthy foods more spatially accessible, make healthy foods cheaper and add more variety, and Create a social marketing campaign for behavior change. The first recommendation is to make healthy foods more available by offering more locations with healthy foods and extending the hours that salad bars are open. These solutions will address the unequal distribution around campus and limit spatial barriers to accessing food. The second recommendation is to decrease the cost of fruits and vegetables and add more variety of healthy foods. The price reduction will help students eat healthier without the guilt of spending too much money and adding a greater variety of foods was also a common suggestion. The last recommendation is to create a social marketing campaign to address the poor dietary behaviors of students on campus. I think that it is a great way to help students visualize the benefits of consuming healthy foods. This will directly address the challenge of getting students to change their diets. My investigation offers a general understanding of students' barriers to eating healthy. 
However, specific research needs to be done to understand how students pick what meal they eat. The research will study the spatial arrangement of food courts to create design recommendations for increasing consumption of fruits and vegetables. Overall, I feel confident about the findings and I am happy that there were reoccurring themes in each study. It helped show that I was going in the right direction. Some limitations for the study included small sample sizes that cannot accurately represent the whole student body. Things to improve on are scoping down the problem and having a clear focus. Dietary behavior is a very complex subject that includes a lot of factors. Lastly, I enjoyed the process of conducting user research and found it satisfying to produce reports that are, that validate, that are validated by proof. I am excited to present these results to Housing and Food Services so that they are aware of students' opinions.